Hello everyone, today we're working on the steam engine. It's a 462. It's Japanese. I sold um, a very boring uh, C62 and um, I bought this with the money. And uh, the, the C62, it was all black. This is a C57, so if it's a 462. It was all black. But just look at this thing. That is very ornate. There's a lot going on out here. So uh, it's a non-runner. It's got, it, also it's a microwave. It's microwave. It's a non-runner. So it's got a short circuit. I'm hoping it's like last week that I have a, I had an engine with a short circuit. I'm hoping it's a, a part that's out of place. So this thing is absolutely beautiful. Definitely worth fixing. That's got a myriad of extra details. Look at this little cooler line that was added. So I've got to take this apart and find out what's going on. But this should be a good runner. To be honest with you, I'm not sure where to begin. But everything looks to be there. So we're going to find out. These little flags, uh, you can't tear them out because they're very malleable. So that's good. I'm not too sure the significance. Maybe it was a special occasion. At any rate, we're going to tear into that. There's a little baggie with extra parts. I guess it's uh, if you want to double head them. These tiny little decals are legible. These decals here, this is all legible. And this too. These tiny little decals here, they're legible. And that. So I guess to uh, remove the shell, you just pull up on it like so. Well, that wasn't too hard. It's got a little bit of dust on it. So I am going to go ahead and wash it. Here, there's a little residue of something which makes it look grayish. But I think I'm not going to touch it. I think I'll just leave it like that. That's going to be passable. And the cab is kind of loose here. I don't know if I need to remove it or not. I'm going to take a look under magnification. It's got crazy nice details. These little, I guess they're pop valves. They're brass, so you can yank on them pretty hard and they don't, uh, they don't break. But this one here is plastic, so be careful with that. And extra added on handrails. And these coolers here, it's a separate part. Look at how fine all these lines are. That is some fine details. Look at these lines, how fine they are. So that's all plastic, so be careful. And then the boiler front, that's got a lot of detail too. So I am gonna wash this uh, right now. I guess I'll wash the tender at the same time. So the tender feels like there's a little weight in there too. This is very similar to Kado, which is maybe a good thing. This one I bought it in Japan. Usually people in Japan take real good care of their trains. This one, uh, I'm not too sure what happens. You can see it's missing a step here. So I'm not too sure what happened there. And also there's the same type of residue on the top here. I'm probably not going to change that. So I'm going to give it plenty of time to dry. And then we can work on our drive system. 
So this one's got a light, which is really cool. So I had a short circuit. Uh, let's just take a look to see if it's still uh, having a problem. Well, that was easy to fix. <laughs> Even sounds really good. I'm running it on a very low setting. You can see that the light works even. So that was easy. Well, I guess this video is going to be just um, cleaning and lubricating. Maybe there was something wrong with the, uh, the, the tender. That's always a possibility. So I'm going to clean and lubricate uh, the drive system. And then we'll work on the tender. This is really cool. I don't have to get into this valve gear, so I'm gonna avoid it if I can. Because everything is good here. Uh, like they say, like they say um, in the West, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But there's extra, I don't know if this is glue or grease here. So I'm gonna tear into that, I guess. I guess, I guess, I guess. There's my short circuit. So that's pretty consistent. So that is glue here. I guess there was an issue with that part. So I have to tear this out. That's going to take a while. I'm guessing that this was a little keeper and uh, just held in place there by friction. I can lift this out. Here's my drawbar. And probably the issue was that these two um, these two contact strips were getting into the uh, the other side of the frame. You can see here that this is your, your side of the frame and this brings electricity from the tender. Very nice to have for a steam engine. Oh, I guess it was in the middle like that. Oh, everything's starting to make sense now. So yeah, if you put it in the middle, it could create a short circuit and that would be bad. Now I've got it where it's supposed to go see before it just lines up in the middle like that and that's no good so you want them both each on their side just like so and then let's see if I still got a short circuit that I'm curious about so that was the only issue this whole engine, the drawbar was not in its pro proper space, but this wheel wobbles a little bit. I'm going to see if I can maybe help it. So I guess I am going to have to tear into the, uh, the vive tr valve train just a little bit. Let's see if I can get this number three uh, driver out. Now you may want to sweep your floor before you get into this because the pin that holds the, the rod is very small and you do not want to lose this. It's very tough to manage. Like I said, you do not want to lose this. <clears throat> I think this gives you a good idea how small this is so I'll put it in the box here I'll give myself a winning chance I might be lucky and not have to undo the whole drivetrain just a number three driver and it's got uh, traction tires so <clears throat> definitely helps 
I don't know too much the history of this engine, but I'm assuming that it would uh, would have uh, hauled passenger cars. There, just the same thing. Very small. Do not you do not want to lose this. And then. We'll undo these two screws that will release this bottom plate. These were not on there tight at all. I'm going to keep the screws together with the bottom plate. That's going to save me. Uh, it's going to save me from looking at which screw goes where. Now they're magnetized a little bit. So that's gonna help and we can have a look at the little uh, pilot truck it's really cute so that's gonna get clean too eventually oh yeah that's not too too hard to work on you can see each wheel has a, a bearing so that is fantastic it's a split frame and I'm gonna see if I can pull this uh, number three driver out awesome and then I'm gonna put my plate back just because I don't want the two other drivers to bounce out and these are have all gears in them which means that they have to be timed perfectly or else your engine won't run there I'll just put that aside for a second and I'll see if I can keep this from wobbling <coughs> It's beautiful detail. This is such a beautiful engine. Yeah, this side wobbles. So again, as I pull it out, I want to be careful not to lose the small bearing. So I just want to see if I can help the wobbling a little bit. Maybe this is cracked. I don't think I need to go much further than that. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in it just to say that I did something because um, it ran good before. So that should be good. Now as I put it back, I'm gonna be very careful to put it back straight. Oh, and have to be a quarter turn apart. That is also true. So I better be, uh, better be sure of what I'm doing now. I'm gonna lubricate this side too. Just a drop, that's all you need. So I got it to where it wobbles a little bit less. Not so noticeable uh, anyways. Now I'm going to lubricate all the bearings one at a time. Just one drop is all you need. And I'm not going to put back the plate uh, permanently yet because I want to uh, wash uh, the front truck first. So I'll be doing that. I'll be washing the front truck and then i'll button uh, the back plate back up this is all plastic so it doesn't conduct the electricity but i want it to be clean nevertheless because it will just look better look at all the detail on these wheels so that's all plastic there's nothing um, not, no weight on this except for 
the uh, the wheels which are metal that's it this is hard to hold together actually that doesn't feel right at all I guess they go like this I'll know if I did it right when I put it on the track because that looks good for now So this thing ran fine, it just needs um, just very minor oiling, just to say that I did something. This is the time to test it, because if you want to change something, I can feel it binding a little bit. So if uh, it's really, it really is time to change something because you're close to all your tools. So what I think it is, I think I'm too tight on here. So if I loosen it just a little bit, it won't bind as much. So I have to do it on both sides. I think it does need a little bit of slack oh yeah this hits the spot this I'm very happy with I am gonna clean uh, the wheels here so I'm just gonna use my rag I'll rotate it a quarter turn and I'll clean it again so I'll do that four times I'll just rotate it a quarter turn like that Then I'll clean that part. So I'll do that four times. Now that it's running the way that I like, I'm going to pop these little pins in. Can't really see what I'm doing. But I should be able to do it. Easy breezy, Japanesey. So final test on the bench before I keep uh, putting stuff in. I tested both directions. That actually feels real good. Hours of fun. I can't help it. I really like uh, running the engine on the bench like that. It still wobbles a bit, this number three driver, but I guess that's just the way it is. Well, all right then. I think that's enough tweaking. I think I've got it to where I want it to be. I'm going to clean uh, the trailing truck. I just wanted to show you the detail uh, of the wheel. That's also pretty neat. And then these side frames are really detailed as well. So that goes right back here. There's a little hole for it. Yeah, you can hardly see. Uh, you can hardly see all those details. So the drawbar goes like this. Make sure to spread out those little contact pins. Very important. That's got a lot of tension, actually. 
and just double check everything. Yep, that looks good. And then we'll bring in the little uh, side frames. I guess they go like that. then you bring in that little locking pin I don't think I'm gonna put some any glue on it I think it should just hold there just unmodified like that because I handled them uh, with care I don't think it's gonna come out but I want to make sure that it can move though So that is going to be good. The tender helps pick up electricity. So I want to take the time and be sure that uh, that is extra clean. And that was a big revolution in my world to have the tender that picks up electricity. I think that that's what made the end scale possible and a whole lot of fun. That is some good stuff. And I'm also going to put the side frames uh, with some soap and some uh, water and my toothbrush. Just to make sure that it's extra, extra, extra clean. Before I button everything back up, I'm going to put maybe a little bit of oil on my worm gear. There's uh, four tabs, two on each side, that hold it together. I'm going to see if I can remove it without too much fuss. If there is too much fuss, I'll probably just leave it there. But since I have, since I have everything in my hands, it's going to be worth trying. little grain of dirt here I'm not going to be keeping that around so then I have access to my worm gear I'm going to do the same thing even a drop of oil Then the same thing for the back and one for good luck then I'll put the little holster uh, back on there yeah that was easy and I suppose this fits right up on here oh look at that it's bent oh it's bent just a tiny little bit but that is um, lead, so it's pretty malleable. Oh, and my excenter rod that let go. That happens from time to time. That's, uh, I guess it's all part of the uh, end scale fun. Okay, I got it, my, uh, my block here. Is the wrong, wrong way around this little pin here should be in the front so I'll fix that no problemo not even paying attention to my excenter crank because that is just a routine around here you know that you know it's probably a good part of life you only fix one problem at a time I like uh, when I get to my job I like to do that first thing in the morning when I get to work I like to fix a couple of problems without problems uh, life is boring so I get up get to work try to fix a couple of problems if I don't have any problems uh, usually people just bring them to me so life is good I like to have a couple of problems not too many 
it can only handle so much but it does make life interesting to have a little bit there so that problem is solved and let's see if this thing fits better now I'm not sure maybe it's supposed to go like that I'm gonna keep playing with it a little bit was it uh, Abraham Lincoln that said that? Uh, walk softly and carry a pair of vice grip. Anyways, uh, that seemed to solve that. So that's going well. Now I have to attach the tender. So I don't have the instructions. So I don't know if these go inside or, or outside of these pins. But if I put them outside, if I put them inside, it, they seem to be too loose. So I'm gonna put them outside that way they have a little bit of spring action to force against them. So outside feels right. I couldn't uh, screw it in on camera because it, I was I needed to focus. Then we'll put this one. This back one here, there's no problem. I don't have to focus too hard to do that. that uh, when I bought it I thought it was a Kado but after working on it I have to say the microwaves is very close in uh, in terms of uh, working principle and the way the parts fit together it's very close to Kado I don't know if they have an agreement or if everything in Japan works like that just take it back half a turn nice and loose yeah that seems pretty good I'm gonna go try it on the track like that just to make sure I'm happy that way if there's a problem I don't have to take the shell off my eccentric crank came off again it's about five times that it's done that so uh, that's it I've had enough of that I'm gonna glue it in place you have to use a toothpick just to be sure not to get any glue on your side rod and I'm gonna do the other side uh, the same way actually putting it in there that is the easy part I just not I'm just not happy to have to redo it every five minutes but that is not too hard to do There. So that's gonna be the end of that. I'm gonna do the other one, the other side also. Here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna put some power to it. Oh wow, it is such a good runner. I'm really glad I got this. Look at that. Perfect. Now all that's left to do is put the shell back on. Even though it has a lot of detail, it's still um, pretty easy to put back on. All things considered. Oh, my little weight I think is interfering a little bit. So 
so that's not good I'm gonna see if I can improve it just a little bit well anyways like this it looks good let's see if it works good oh yeah that's perfect I'm gonna put the little square that holds my uh, my tender back on see the other guy glued this I'm starting to see why but I'm gonna try to get away with uh, no glue I think I can do that but I see why he glued it together there that looks good to line up everything and now it's time to run some trains on the second track I'll be running this uh, Kado uh, USRA 282 heavy but that opens up the question could you uh, Americanize the C57 sure you could but you don't really need to because there's always these really excellent uh, American models around. You know, they run great and they're well detailed. So anyways, I'm going to throw some cars behind it. And then we can have some fun. All the hard work is done now. Right now, it's pulling six uh, of the heavyweight cars. They call them heavyweights because uh, they're hard to pull. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.